We're recording? We're live! Hey guys, it's Red Knobster, and today what I have for you is the Halo Infinite Movement Guide tutorial. Now, if you haven't seen my movement guides in the description, I go through each of the competitive maps except for Behemoth, because nobody likes it. I have a goal of completing all of the maps in Halo Infinite, kind of showing off movement you can do in each map. In this video itself, we're going to be covering curb slides, we're going to be covering super slides and the difference between the two, a lot of people think they're the same. We're going to be talking about coyote time and over jumps and the connection between the two. We're also going to be going into grappling hook uh, bunny hops or grappling hook slides, some people call them. And I'm running out of fingers here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, we're also going to be looking at new movement tech that I haven't seen anywhere else on the internet yet for Halo Infinite, but it has been in previous Halos called lift canceling. And I'll show why I think nobody has found it yet in this game, but we'll get into that later in the video. Now, if you're a talented young individual, you may have noticed that we also have the inputs on the screen as well, which has been highly requested in the movement guides. This tutorial is the most necessary to have them though, because there isn't gonna be any discrepancies about when I'm hitting buttons and when I'm, you know, not hitting a button and things like that. And that's something that even using my voice wouldn't really be able to specify. So we have the inputs up there. If you're using a controller, um, you can translate this all pretty easy. Instead of spacebar, I renamed it jump and stuff like that. So you know exactly what the buttons I'm doing do. Now, full disclosure, I do have multiple keybinds that are set for the same thing. So crouch is control, as well as this random ass button on the side of my mouse. I come from Apex Legends where um, a lot of people use the mouse buttons to slide, as well as you can see I have jump mount the scroll wheel down as well as spacebar. Um, this comes in handy for things in Apex, such as like bunny hopping, but this game, I'm just using it because of muscle memory. You don't necessarily need jump bound to the scroll wheel. So just keep that in mind. I also have crouch uh, bound to up on the scroll wheel too, mainly just so I can turbo bag people. I don't know if you can see that on 60 FPS because it's fast. <laughs> Anyways, so curb slides, let's cover that first. Numero uno. Curb slides are when you get an extreme boost off of a slide when you fall off of a curb. Now, you can fall off of just about anything. Something this height is pretty good, and something that goes even as low as this height when you're going down these stairs works as well. But anything a little bit shorter or a little bit higher doesn't really give you any benefit, right? If you're higher up, the game basically starts thinking that you're falling instead of that you're going down a ramp, which is how curb slides work. So if you pull off a successful curb slide by just simply just sprinting off the edge and then holding down your crouch or a slide button right when you hit the ground, you know, get some in intense momentum out of nowhere, right? Whereas if you just slide off of this, you're, you're not going anywhere, right? But if you sprint off and then hold slide and then jump shortly after, again, I'm jumping with the scroll wheel there, you actually can get some great distance. And in this case, I got all the way to like right here, right? And that's what a curb slide does, right? That's that's basically the only concept behind a curb slide is you just sprint off a ledge, hold down slide, and if you want to, you know, continue that momentum, you can you can jump afterwards and bounce off of walls, or you can get a, a further distance because your jump carries the momentum of your curb slide slide. But there is a way to go even further than this, right? So a curb slide goes to the second line right here on this building. Uh, it doesn't go any further, it never will unless you're doing a super slide. So that comes down to number two, right? So a super slide and a curb slide, a lot of people use them interchangeably, but a super slide is even faster than a curb slide, judging by the name. So a super slide, if you may notice, is when you do a curb slide, but these white lines are on your screen. So these white lines are sprint lines, right? And you see they have gone away because I'm no longer sprinting. So if you're sprinting into a wall, you'll see these pop up. So theoretically, we could do a super slide by sprinting into this wall, doing a 180, and then getting that slide. As you can see, we got a little bit further, but that's not the best way to do a super slide because of the concept behind a super slide. So a curb slide is just detecting that you're falling off of something that you were sprinting on. Whereas a super slide means that you have full sprint. So you have those sprint lines if you have them turned on, as well as that you're only running on the object that you're falling off of for a split second. So let's show you what an actual super slide looks like.
And there you go. As you can see, we entirely cleared the building that time. Now, a good example of a curb slide versus a super slide is actually in my recharge movement guide video. The first two jumps we'll take a look at here. So in this first gap, we just do a normal curb slide and we're able to make this gap quite easily using this crate, of course. But in the second gap, we're actually using a super slide where we fall off of a pillar that you wouldn't even traditionally be able to curb slide off of. And in doing so, using the super slide mechanism, we're able to create <laughs> a jump that goes over a gap even larger than the original gap and faster as well and starting from further away. Now keep in mind that the super slide that we just watched in the recharge video is much more difficult than the super slide in this video and the reason is, is because the super slide in this video we are running parallel to the object that we're super sliding off of meaning that it's much easier to hit at least a curb slide if not a super slide because the edge of pixels that we need to land on for just a split second is a much more large margin of error. We can either land at the very beginning, right in the middle, or at the end. Whereas in the video that we just showed with the recharge super slide, we're hitting the edge of the battery that's perpendicular to the direction that we're running, which is much more difficult to hit in time. And if you miss the jump by landing on top of the battery, you obviously don't get a slide, whether that be a super slide or a curb slide. And if you completely jump over the battery by trying to aim for the last tiny pixel, you also don't get a curb slide or a super slide. So in this case, running parallel with an object and then turning just before is actually much easier to time. Now, whether or not you get the super slide or even the curb slide is still just as difficult as ever, but with enough practice, you can be getting curb slides very consistently and super slides in the case of running parallel with an object are just an added benefit. So the next concept that I wanted to cover in this video is a switchback. So a normal curb slide you have to start on the object and then curb slide off. But for an object like this on the map Bazaar, it's relatively pointless to do so because you have to go out of your way to jump on it and the amount of time you would have saved from the curb slide you would have lost by not just doing this, you know, running around the corner with sprints normally. So the way to make it still usable or beneficial or unexpected in gameplay is to do a switchback, which is when you jump to a curb and then immediately turn around and then curb slide off of it. Now the timing of it is a little bit more difficult than a normal curb slide, especially if you're on controller, because you have to do that 180, but if you do it successfully you get just as far as a normal curb slide, because you maintain that sprint. And it's actually the only way that you can do a super slide on an object like this, because it's in a cubby. So like the first super slide I showed, and the super slide right over there, you can't jump over it and land on the last few pixels because there's no run up to be had. And it's also in this cubby, so you can't run parallel with it. So you can try doing one of these, which is, you know, all fine and dandy, but the process of like sprinting against the wall and like sliding off of it is wasting way more time than you could just be doing this, right? So ideally, when you're doing a switchback like this, you can go for the curb slide, but if you land on the very edge, like so, you can do a 180 right before you do it, and then you can super slide off. So I've had super slides from right here that get me all the way to this building, not just to where rockets are, which is a pretty interesting concept where if somebody says, oh, he's mid, he's mid, you can try to jump up here, do a 180, get a curb slide, and try to get a super slide that goes even further, and you can try to land right on top of him if you want, right? But it's just a concept. So the switchback is a very useful tool to have in your arsenal. You can kind of use it to get many different directions when you're not going in that direction in the first place. And it's something that people don't really think about until they have super slides in their arsenal because it's something where somebody tries to land on something for a split second and then turn off, which is what a switchback essentially is. Now, if we really look at the keybinds here, it's pretty similar. We, we're holding forward the whole time, right? We're literally just holding forward. We sprint onto an object. If we have maintained sprint on, which you should, you'll have sprint the entire time. So really all it is is we just jump onto an object, turn, do a curb slide off of it. Simple as that. Now a switchback doesn't necessarily need to be a 180 degree pivot. You can jump onto an object like this, switch back to this direction, and then switch back to this direction, switch back to this direction. It doesn't really matter. The whole concept is that you're able to do this turn and still maintain sprint and allow yourself to have that sprint so you can use the slide for a curb slide or even hopefully a super slide. All right, let's get away from slides for a little bit. Let's head into overjumps. So, Coyote time and overjumps are strongly connected. Now, if you don't know what coyote time is, it's a game design term for being able to float on air and still being able to jump. It's made so that if you're running off an edge and you're trying to jump at the very edge of it, it's a little bit more forgiving. It's in Doom, it's in Halo, since forever. 
basically you fall off and you're still able to jump even though there's nothing but air beneath you. It's a lot more apparent in theater mode, but I'm too lazy to show that. But the concept at hand is that it allows you to basically jump further than you would if you had jumped from the very edge. Because you're jumping from, like, right here instead of right here. Now, the case of over jumps is that you're essentially doing a vertical coyote time jump, right? Coyote jump. So instead of jumping a little bit later horizontally, you're jumping a little bit later vertically. So right here, we can't physically jump on top of this without clambering onto it. You can try as hard as you want, but if you're trying to crouch jump or, you know, you're just going to climb every single time. Now, if you jump from right here and do an over jump, you can actually make the jump onto this without a single clamber animation happening. You may think, oh, well, you're just ramping off of that ledge and landing on the boxes, and that's true. That's what an over jump is. It's essentially a vertical ramp created by the edge of something, in this case, a ramp. But it can also be done on objects that aren't ramp shaped by just hitting the edge of them. Now, it's relatively difficult to pull it off, but it is possible, so I'll go ahead and show it. As you can see, you can't physically jump up on top of this. So for the launch site movement guide that I did, I was like, oh, pick up this fusion coil, now you'll be able to make it. Wrong. You can't physically reach this edge. Um, you may be able to if you funk around with it a lot, but at the end of the day, the best way to do it is still an overjump. So for this overjump in particular, what we're going to be doing is sprinting, jumping from about right here, and on our upwards jump, we're going to be hitting this edge. Now, if you don't want to hit the wall and just fly upwards, because then you won't get a jump. But if you hit that edge, the game will give you coyote time and think, oh, he's falling off an edge. But in reality, for the overjump, instead of falling off an edge, we're falling upwards. So we're running, we jump, we hit the edge, reset our jump and our coyote time, and we'll start bouncing up a little bit as we ramp over this fusion coil. And then we'll be able to delay our jump off of this fusion coil to be about right here instead of right here. And this extra like, you know, four or five inches is relatively useless in most game sense, but allows this jump to be possible. Like so. Now, full disclosure, overjumps are relatively useless as of right now, but it is advanced movement that makes some things possible that weren't possible before, so I think it's important to include, especially when Forge and stuff like that comes out, when people make jump maps. It might be interesting to see what people can do when they have that mechanic in mind when they're trying to make things, you know, a challenge. All right, guys, the next one we're doing is grapple slides. Now, this is the last tech I'm showing off before I show off the brand new tech that I found that I don't think anybody else has tried to do yet, at least on YouTube or Reddit. So super excited to show you guys that. But regardless, we also have grapple slides. Now, this is basic and straightforward and really easy to do, but a lot of people don't understand how it works. Now, once you understand, it's very easy and you can do it every single time. But if you don't understand, it'll look a little something like this, right? You'll grapple, and you'll try to slide, and nothing will happen. And the reason is, is because you're not sliding, right? Something people don't know is that in Halo Infinite, you have to be sprinting to be able to slide. It doesn't matter if you have a lot of momentum coming out of a grapple. If you hit crouch to slide, you won't slide, you'll just crouch. So that sprint needs to be active. Which is why auto sprint is pretty important to have on, especially for grapple slides. Because then you don't have to worry about it. You just sprint, grapple, and then slide. Now, if you're still not getting your grapple slide, even though you're sprinting before and during your slide, the reason is, is because you're letting go of the forward input. For instance, if you look at my W key, which is forward, if you're sprinting, you grapple, you let go of W and then try to slide, it cancels your sprint, even though you can't really tell because you're grappling. The game knows that you're not sprinting anymore and will not let you grapple slide. So that's all you have to do is sprint, grapple, hold down forward, slide. Now another thing I wanted to mention about grapple sliding that a lot of people don't know about is bunny hopping. Now if you don't know what bunny hopping is, it's very big in Apex Legends and a bunch of other games. It's essentially a way to preserve your forward momentum when you have a lot of it. So if you're grapple hooking, you slide, and then you jump, you maintain momentum in the air instead of losing it to your slide. So let's show what it looks like if you don't bunny hop and show how fast you lose momentum to your slide. So I make it to about right here, right, which is pretty awful, even though it's faster than just doing a normal grappling hook. The grapple slide is, but if you do a grapple bunny hop, it'll look a little something like this. Right, you can go all the way. <laughs> you can maintain that momentum for a long time. All right, guys, time for the brand new movement tech, and it's on the best map in the game, Behemoth. Yes, 
Hopefully this will make this map actually playable or enjoyable to some extent, at least for the people that watch this video, because they'll have the upper hand, of course. Especially in Capture the Flag, or if you're just trying to get to top mid in general because nobody else ever plays there because this map is poorly designed. <laughs> at the end of the day, this is a bug, most likely, but it's a bug that was in Halo 3 the entire time it existed, so I doubt they'll patch this out because they won't even patch out people's actual concerns. So, originally I found this using the scroll wheel for my turbo bag because of the basic concept that if you jump into a lift, it pushes you out, yeah? Whereas if you jump into a lift and keep pressing crouch, it's a little bit slower. You can kind of even like float there a little bit, right? Which is interesting in and of itself and maybe can be used for clips or something. But if you sprint just right, you can jump from right here and make it right over this ledge and have enough downwards and forward momentum to be able to turbo bag your way all the way through there, basically lift canceling the gravity lift. As you can see, that way is not as reliable because when I'm using the scroll wheel, I'm not just using the scroll wheel, I'm using my whole hand. And in doing so, you zoom in, change your mouse DPI, and accidentally start firing your gun, which name may not be wanted. But if done correctly, you can get through very easily, and that's the fastest way to do it. But there is a much easier and slower way to do it, which isn't even that much slower, but at the end of the day, you just stand about right here. You jump in, and you don't even need to use a scroll wheel. You can just kind of crouch, like you're going to crouch pretty fast still, and scroll wheel still gets you through there just as easy, but... I actually think I found here that using a scroll wheel is basically just as effective. So, if you want to go fast, you have to use scroll wheel. If you want to go the slow route, um, you have you can crouch just normally, which this would be the only way possible on controller because there's no way you're crouching 30 times a second on a controller, even if you're sniped down, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tried and tested, this is the fastest way to capture the flag right now. No sprint required. You can do it on controller if you want. You just come up in here. And it's a straight shot, literally a straight line all the way from one flag to the other. It's the straightest possible line. Also, if you do this, it is bugged, so you will be haunted for the rest of the game with these audios. So thank you everybody for watching, I appreciate it a lot. If you haven't, check out the movement guides in the description, there might be more you haven't seen. I might even link it in the pinned comment of the video. And you can see all the jumps that I've done so far, and you can even apply this tech to the jumps I've done as well, and maybe find some more of your own. So. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe.